down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, desperate for you. Desperate for you, and I surrender. Drench my soul as mercy and grace unfold. I hunger and thirst. I hunger and thirst. With arms stretch wide, I know you hear my cry. Speak to me.
You called me out upon the waters The great unknown Where fear may fail And there I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stay
Myself, my best in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. One of the greatest. Greatest tragedy of every Christian or many Christians in the world today is to fall out of love for Christ. Many don't know it, many they think that they are, but many have. How do you know that one has fallen out of love for Christ? It's when the activities that they did at first, which when they just got born again. The excitement that they had before, it's no longer there. And that is why the Lord has given me an assignment when I preach the gospel, is to ignite the love for Jesus, not as a command, but as to bring out his love to each and every person and what he has done, so that they can ignite the love that they had in order for them to fellowship with him in prayer, to fellowship with him in studying the word, to fellowship with him, because it's not about the traditions that are done in your church but it is about your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ it is about your personal love with him it's about the heartbeat for the master and that is why I'm preaching the gospel so that I can ignite that love for you because many have grown out of the love of Jesus Christ and it is my prayer that as you listen to my teachings as you hearken to my teachings all my teachings might ignite how much Jesus loved you so that the love that you had from him from the beginning might come back again and you might love him like you did do everything for him because there are many enemies that have quenched your love for him there are many enemies that have quenched your love for him which can be offense which can be uh, you know disappointment which can be a lot of things they, they make which can be the, the crowdness of the world. But I want you to know, listen to the gospel because the gospel is the love message of Jesus Christ to you so that it can ignite the first love that you had for your beloved love, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And this got nothing to do with tradition, not just tradition, but your personal love for him. Love you. Stay connected to my teaching and be blessed. Spiritual giving is something that each and every one of us needs to know. What is spiritual giving? How do you sow in the spirit? Because Jesus said that if you store up your house where thieves and robbers cannot reach, how do you give in the spirit? How do you give to the spirit? It's when you give through the response of the word of God. Because the words that I speak unto you, say the Lord Jesus Christ, they are spirit and they are life. And each time as a child of God, you want to sow in the spirit so that you can reap. Because you only reap when you sow in the spirit. It's when you give in response to the gospel. Give in response to the word that you have received. Each time you give based on emotion, you don't reap. Each time you give based on if you love the man of God or not, you don't reap. But when you give in response to the word that you're hearing and the word that is coming and the word you are receiving, then you are sowing in the spirit. And when you sow in the spirit, then you reap a hundredfold. Even when you tithe or when you give, whatever types of giving, it has to be in response to the word of God. Be in response to the gospel that you are receiving. And I want to urge each and every one of you from this message that I received from the Lord. Give in response to the gospel, not, into, not to emotions, not even to, to if you love the person or not. But the response to the word, because the word of God is spirit and it is life. God bless you.
Amen, amen. Shalom, shalom again. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I greet those that are here and those that are watching us right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, be greeted, be greeted. This is our Sunday Live uh, wonderful program, uh, which is coming to you at your own place. Uh, those that are here, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you for being here, um, live here at studio for our gospel series, which started some time in October. And we are still on it today. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are still on the gospel series today. In fact, welcome to our Passover. Remember I told you that uh, Passover, the Lord, I thought we were going to start on Wednesday, but God said, the Lord said to me, let's start on Sunday. Because the actual Passover, it's starting on Monday. It's starting tomorrow. The Jewish Passover, the, 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 the correct date of Passover is actually starting uh, tomorrow. So Jews are starting tomorrow with their Passover, although we know that there's so much war that is going on in that nation right now. And it's happening during a very important festival. This is to alert you that the coming of the Lord is near. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm. Especially that is happening on Passover. It is a serious sign that indeed the coming of the Lord is near. Because Jesus can even come on Passover. Mm. You see, God started manifesting after, after a long time in the Bible. When he manifested to children of Israel, it was on Passover. And he appeared, he spoke to Moses to deliver them. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And Jesus also died for us on Passover. So anything can happen. Even now, anything can happen. And I'm wondering why they are changing dates and dates this. Why they put Easter now different from Passover. Are you sure? It doesn't make sense because they, they want people not to, to capture the actual dates mm -hmm. in this year. Because now if, if, if Easter was in March... That means now the Ascension Day is going to be a different day what it was, what it's supposed to be. That means our calculation will not be the same because we are going to be calculating in a wrong, you know what I'm saying, yeah. in a wrong way. So it's better for us to go and visit. And when it's Pentecost, we will, not, we will not calculate it in the right way to know Pentecost. Although we are not observing those things in a, in a, in a, in a, in a law, right? But we know that these are seasons of the Lord, which anything can happen since we are waiting for, our, for our, the redemption of our bodies, right? Since we are waiting for rapture to take place. So if you give us a date, which is not the actual date, right, that can confuse us. I don't know if somebody is understanding what I'm saying. So the world will always try to do that. That's why I told you that we were planning, we were having Passover in March, but God was not talking to me regarding Passover. And I kept on wondering, why are you not talking to me regarding Passover? He says, go to Google, check, just type Passover. I saw it is not Passover. So I stopped teaching about uh, all the teachings of Passover. I said, we are moving our Passover to what? To April. Because that's where it is. That's why now he said, start on Sunday to teach about Passover. So welcome to our Passover service. Welcome to Passover. Happy Passover wherever you are. So don't be confused that, oh, I thought we are finished with Passover. You are not finished. This is actually the Passover, right? It is, it is in the month of Nisan. And by the time the Gregorian calendar, which is what the world is using, uh, was saying it's Passover, it was not yet the month of Nisan in, 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 in the Hebrew calendar. The month of Nisan began in April. And that is when Passover happened in the month of Nisan. So we are celebrating Passover right now. So happy Passover wherever you are. And uh, it is a nice time for you to, you know, we did not prepare communion today, apparently. But it's a nice time for you to also have communion as well with your families. Uh, you know, on Wednesday, I'll make sure that we, we, we have probably communion and also on Friday and also on Sunday next week. We're going to be partaking of, of such as well. Because why? This is the season of Passover. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. This is the season of what? Passover. Of Passover. So that's why uh, the Lord said, okay, we must have it now. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It's our first day today. And... Um, 
And there's so many things you're going to learn. So many things you're going to learn. But uh, today the Lord wanted me. In fact, this, sun, this, this Sunday is supposed to be what we call Palm Sunday. You know when people do Palm Sunday. Have you ever heard of Palm Sunday? Yes. Uh, Palm Sunday is when Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem on a donkey. And everyone was, was putting on palms, right? I'll explain the mystery of Palm Sunday, I think on Wednesday, right? On Wednesday. So, so it's supposed to be Palm Sunday today because that is the time where Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem to prepare himself to go and die for our sins. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And this time when he entered, he entered through the donkey. And there's a meaning why people celebrate Palm Sunday. There's a, there's a particular reason why it is so significant regarding the salvation. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But before we get into the teaching of Passover, the Lord said to me, teach about I know I've taught about the concept of sin, but he said, teach about sin first, the concept of sin, or, or in a way, because why? If we talk about the gospel, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? The gospel is the saving power of Jesus Christ, right? In fact, when we read the book, let's just open this scripture. I think it's going to be our first scripture for the day. Uh, let's open uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, right? Romans 1, verse 16. Let's open it now. All right. Because the microphone is on me, I know that Elder is here today. So, but I don't know if you, you're going to sound. <laughs> Romans chapter 1 verse what? 16. Okay, you can, you can read it, Elder. Then I would, I would read it again if, if you're, you're, you are not sounding to the, to the public. Romans 1.16 1, mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ mm -hmm. For it is the power of God unto salvation mm. To everyone that believeth mm. To the Jew first And also to the Greek Verse 17 For therein is the righteousness of God Revealed from faith to faith Mm -hmm. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see, the Bible says there, I'll just read it for those, some of you maybe you couldn't hear. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel uh, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. To the Jews first, then the Greek, and also the Greek. For therein the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Say hallelujah. So you see, what do we define the gospel? It says the gospel, it is the power of God unto what? Unto salvation. Unto salvation. Gospel is the power of God. Now, if the gospel is the power of God, we need to know what did the gospel save us from? That's why God says, I must start in sin. Right? What did the gospel save us from? If the gospel is the what? The power of God unto salvation. What salvation? You know, uh, it pains me a lot, especially in, 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 in first world countries. Sometimes the Lord allows me to watch these debates of different religion, debating and all those kind of things. And also some other things which are very disturbing in, in some first world countries where you find when people are trying to evangelize to people, giving them the message of salvation. And then someone says, I don't need saving. They say, I don't need saving. I'm just figuring life, I'm just figuring this life out. Can you imagine what kind of thing is that? That's how people have come to a point of not understanding the basis of the gospel. When we talk about sin, we are talking about the basis of the gospel. You see, without you understanding uh, sin, you will not understand salvation. You will not understand what? Salvation. You need to understand the sin and for you to be able to, to understand the salvation you need to to come to to the knowledge because that is where that's the first that's the genesis of salvation that's the what genesis. otherwise you'll be like those people who says i don't need saving i'm just figuring figuring this life out what kind what kind of a confession is that what kind of a what kind of a person is like is like already you are rejecting say hallelujah, hallelujah. you are rejecting something which is going to save you because you don't have the knowledge, right, Amen. of sin. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. You don't have the knowledge of sin. 
Say hallelujah. In fact, in the Hebrew word, the word, uh, the word for sin, there are two words for sin. You have, you have, you have, you have kata, right, and, and havon, havon. Now, those words, they're actually singular. They're what? According to God, according to the Hebrew Bible, we don't have what we call sins as in English we have. Sin in, 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 in Hebrew is singular. It's what? Singular. It's singular. It's called sin. It's one. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Whether, whether it be that there are so many errors, maybe one is committed, but sin in the original Bible, it is one. It is what? One. Say it is one. It is, one. It is singular. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's open Romans. Uh, I think we're going to open. I think it's Romans chapter 5. I want you to see this. Where did sin originate? And what is it? We're going to deal with this. Romans 5. I know I've taught this subject so many times. But but as we prepare. We remember we're in the series of Passover. I'm starting. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Romans 5. Uh, we're going to read verse 12. Listen to what the Bible says. Romans 5 verse 12. Romans 5 verse 12. Romans 5 verse 12. Yes. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Did you see that? Now verse 12, it tells us that death, wherefore, as one man, as one man sin entered into the world, and death by what? By sin. And so death was passed unto all men, for all have sinned. That's how sin entered into the world. It entered through one man. It entered through what? One man. It entered through one man. And who's that one man? That one man was Adam. Adam was the first man to be created in the world. And um, he, he is the first man. He's the first man. That's why his name is Adam. The word Adam means man. It means what? Man. That's where they derive human. Because it comes from the word Adam. So Adam is like the, 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 the origin of every human race, the head of every human race. Let me say it that way, right? The head of every human race. And that head of every human race, because of sin entered, because of that man, right? It came into all men. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's somebody hear what I'm saying right now. Amen. It came into all men. Because of him, because he was a father. Say hallelujah. Sin now was passed on from one person to another person. For example, the Bible tells us about Jesus Christ, that he was sinless. The only reason that Jesus Christ was sinless is because he was not born out of a man. It, I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. Have you ever thought why Jesus was born out of a virgin woman? Why was it so? It was because that if there was a man involved, Jesus was going to still be a sinner, and he could not qualify to die for us. Are you hear what I'm saying right now? Because yeah. sin is passed on everyone that is in this world. You know, sometimes I hear people saying, oh, there are those that are born special, uh, like this. and sport. Let me tell you something. Everybody is born in sin. If you are born of a man, if, if you have someone that you call your dad, right? You are born of sin because that's how it's passed on. It's passed on through the seed. It's passed on to the what? Everybody on earth. Because Adam, first, sin entered because of Adam. It was passed on from generation to generation. Where do we see this? The Bible says here, let's open, uh, for example, let's open Numbers 14, right? Numbers 14, verse 18. Numbers 14. I want you to see this. Say hallelujah. Numbers 14. Make sure you follow this series because after we are done with this, there's another. I'm still continuing, right? Make sure you follow this series. Numbers 14, we're going to read. Verse 18. Yes, uh, Numbers 14. Let me just make sure, confirm that it is what it is. Yes, verse 18. The Lord is long suffering, mm -hmm. great mercy. Mm. Forgiving iniquity and transgression, mm -hmm. and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, 
unto the third and fourth generation. Now, I want you to see that sin, this, this verse is showing us how sin travels, right? How sin what? Travels. From generation to what? Generation. That is why you have um, these things that uh, ended up happening uh, and developing where people call them generational curse or generational things. Say hallelujah. You know, sometimes people, they looked at themselves to say, me, God doesn't love me. I'm a bad person. You must understand all of us are bad, but God loves us. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. Every human being is bad. I don't know how to say this in the context of this teaching. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? It does, I see some says, I'll not come to church until I'm ready. There's no one who is ever ready. As long as all of us were born of a man, we are all born with sin. The Bible says the sins, they're visiting, they're visiting these sins, they travel. Why God has to visit the sins? It's because they travel from generation to generation. What do we say about Adam? When Adam began to sin against God, because sin is singular. How did that sin manifest it in, in his children? We see Cain and Abel. Cain killed Abel. Adam didn't kill anybody. So the sin was not in the doing. It was not just because of the, you know, it was not just the doing. The doings multiply because of the seed of sin that entered. Because of what they ate. Because of what? What they ate, what they ate entered into them and produced sin. Now we see now, Cain kill Abel now. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And guess what? Not only that, we see from generation to generation <clears throat> new forms of manifestation of sins begin to manifest because of that seed of sin that they partake of. And somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. We see all sorts of forms of sin. We find that in Romans chapter 1, uh, verse I think it's verse 18. It's just that uh, maybe we can open it. It's fine. Let's, let, me just, let me just select the right scriptures to read because it's quite a long one. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Romans 1, uh, Romans 1, verse 18, right? All right, let's start, let's start in, um, all right, let's start in verse number, um, let's start in verse 18 is fine, the states of the world, yeah? Romans 1 verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven mm. against all uncordiness mm. and unrighteousness of men mm. who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. 19. Mm. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. Mm. For God hath sh showed it unto them. Mm. 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. All right, let's go to verse 21. I think 21. if you can, yes, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Uh -huh. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, mm. and their foolish heart was darkened. Do you see that? Uh -huh. 22. Mm -hmm. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, mm. and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, mm. and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Verse 24. Now listen to this now. Yeah. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts mm -hmm. to dishonor their own bodies mm. between themselves. You see, that is uh, what we have today. They call it homosexuality, <coughs> right? He says this also begins to happen, right? Mm. Because of the seed of sin. God gave them up, right? Uh-huh. Verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature 
more than the Creator, mm. who is blessed forever. They save Amen. the creature. They save the creature. You see, it worships of, of 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 dead people. What is created, you are saving it. Mm. You see, it's, it says the results of what of the seed of what of sin. So sin is the seed, and there are different manifestations of it. What Adam did is not what Cain did. Adam ate of the fruit, but Cain killed, because now the fruit of that seed was what was killing. But then we begin to see others, what the Bible says, they dishonor their own bodies. Right? That's another. So it's, it's a lot. Let's, let, let me see. Let me see also. Let's continue to... Um, okay, verse 26, yeah? For this cause, ah. God gave them up into vile affection. Vile affection, yeah? For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Even women, what do they call it today? Lesbianism, right? Yes. Women, we are seeing this. So when you see what is happening in the world, is as a result, the problem in the world is sin. It's what? Sin. It's sin. Why is it so? It's because these are fruits to show there is a seed of sin that is in existence into all human beings. It's somebody hear what I'm saying right now. And you are not without excuse. No man is without excuse. No man, if you have a father, you are born of a man, that seed of sin is in you. What Jesus made Jesus not to qualify is because he was born of the Holy Ghost and it was before Mary. You know, one time, one time I heard something that, 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 that um, uh, when I was doing a research on how Jews, why they don't believe in Jesus. There's so many things they speak about. And one of the things that, that hurt me the most, it was... It was that part of someone, maybe it's because they were not educated, they were saying, okay, Jesus was born out of wedlock, right? Because remember that uh, Jesus was, was conceived before Mary and Joseph got what? Married. There was a reason why as well, right? Mm -hmm. But it, it, there was a reason why, because marriage, that means marriage, if, 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 if Mary was married, that means he would have not been a virgin. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? In other words, it means now Christ could not come because there was a seed of a man in there. Did somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Oh, yes. So a seed was not supposed to be there so that when Jesus comes, he comes what? Clean. I think I'm speaking in, in, in parables. Did somebody understand what I'm saying right now? Oh, yes. That is why God immediately when Mary was supposed to get married to Joseph or he was exposed to Joseph, God came to the sin and quickly placed Jesus before they could get married. Mm -hmm. So that Jesus can be born before they consummate their marriage. I think those who are others, they understand what I'm saying. Because marriage is when it's consummated. Is somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. So he quickly brought Jesus so that Jesus is not born like we are. Is somebody understand what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. In order for him to qualify <coughs> to be the one to save us. So, so the problems you see in the world, lesbianism, or... All these things that you see that are manifesting, uh, gayism, all those things that you see, we're going to read of most, is as a result of the seed of sin. And the Bible tells us this, so that not that we might, you know, we might run away from God, but that we may recognize that we need saving. That we need what? Saving. You see, if, if let's say for example, if, if you were... Like, I think I was talking to Elder just before now, I was telling me, if you are eating recklessly, right? And when you're eating recklessly, maybe bad food and all that, and then you are growing big and growing fat and all that, do you know that you might not even know that there's a sickness that is in you until you go and get tested? Mm -hmm. are, are you understanding what I'm saying? You can continue living and thinking everything is all right until you die. Until one day you sleep and never wake up and people wonder what happened. Today we're laughing. Yesterday we're laughing. I just met them yesterday. Life is too short. If you say how people cause those things, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Until you are diagnosed, that's where you begin to realize something is wrong. That's what the Bible shows us. When the Bible begins to call these things out, is God giving us a diagnosis for us to realize that we need what? We need saving. Did somebody hear what I'm saying right now? It's not coming to tell us, to tell us, oh, we should go away from God and all those things. God does not love us. He hates us and all that. No, he's giving us that, hey, you people, there is an issue. That's what the law came to do. A law is like a diagnosis. It's like a what? A diagnosis. 
diagnosis. The law is like a diagnosis. It is showing you. Uh, it's not like it is there. Are, are you telling me that a diagnosis, when it comes to you, it is there so that you can, you can, you can do, you can do according to the diagnosis? No, the diagnosis is there to show you you have a condition. You are sick, and you need to be healed. Amen. It's somebody hear what I'm saying right now. Yes. That's what the law did. So when God brought the law to man, He was not telling man that. You can be saved by the law because we are not saved by diagnosis. You, you know, you, you are a mechanic, right? You can, a car cannot be saved by diagnosis. There's no way that diagnosis, the fact that without the, the diagnosis, the car can be saved. Yes, there are things that can be eliminated by the diagnosis. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? But it's not entirely that the whole car can be fixed by what? By a diagnosis. Say hallelujah. That's how the law was like. There are things that seems like the law could eliminate some things, but it could not solve the issue. It could just show you that this is what you have. So when this Bible, you know, each and every time people hear the teaching of sin, some people teach sin wrongly because we teach sin so that men can realize that they need what? Saving. That's what the teaching of sin is supposed to do. The teaching of sin is supposed to be the foundation of the gospel, not, not the... The one that chased people away and the one that causes people to run away from God and they think God doesn't love them. No, it's to show them that they need God. The teaching of sin is supposed to show you that you need God. Like how when you are diagnosed, because you are diagnosed, maybe you have a particular sickness or you are diagnosed of, of, of something, then you know you need a hospital, you need pills, you need to, you need a, uh, is somebody here what I'm saying right now? You need God to, you need God to heal you. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you right now? Yeah. So it's the same way. That's why the, 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 the Bible, that's why the law of Moses came. Because even Israel themselves, they were not seeing that they have a condition. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now what does the Bible say? It says women and all that. And then let's continue to verse number. We're going to continue. Um, verse 29. Let's read 29. Okay, verse 28 and 29, yeah? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, uh -huh. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. My God. To do those things which are not, are not convenient. Look at this. Being filled uh. with all unrighteousness, mm. fornication, mm -hmm. wickedness, mm -hmm. covetousness, mm -hmm. maliciousness, mm -hmm. Full of envy, mm -hmm. murder, mm -hmm. debate. Even debate, can you imagine? But De deceit, uh -huh. De malignity, uh -huh. whisperers. Uh -huh. Whisperers, that means you come and say, Have you had? Have you had? One, two, three, four, five. I'm telling you. But don't tell anyone, eh? <laughs> Some people don't know that is as a result of sin. <laughs> that kind of a behavior. Don't tell anyone. Okay. Uh huh. Back, 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 is that one of speaking bad about someone behind their back. Uh huh. Continue. Haters of God. Uh huh. Despiteful. Mm -hmm. Proud. Mm -hmm. Bosters. Mm -hmm. in inventors of evil things. Mm -hmm. Inventing evil things. It still continues, yeah? Disobedient to parents. Uh huh. Without understanding. Uh huh. Covenant breakers. Uh huh. Without natural affection, uh -huh. implacable, uh -huh. and merciful. Stop there. All these things, all these things, they are symptoms. They are what? Symptoms. It's the symptoms that prove that the whole human race, the what? The whole human race. Has a condition. Sin is a condition. Sin is a what? Condition. Like sickness is a condition. It is a condition of man. And you see, fornication what is, is what people they like to talk about the most, right? It is the symptoms. It is, it is the symptoms as much as whispering is the symptoms. That means God did not write about whispering, but whispering to God is as a result of sin. But biting, it's also as a result of what? Of sin. You know, I know some Christians, they love speaking about fornication, adultery. They'll focus so much on that. While they are big biters, they forget big biters is also there. It's also what? 
is also there. Because why? The teaching of sin according to the gospel is to bring men to understand that we all need what? Saving. Say we all need saving. We all need saving. Say we all need saving. We all need saving. Need saving. Let's open this one. Romans 3 verse 20. Let's go to Romans 3 now. 23, right? Romans 3 verse 23. I want you to see this. Romans 3 verse 23. I said three verse what? No, I was opening a wrong one. I just want to make sure before you read, you are reading the right thing. Yeah, you can read it. For all have sinned, mm. come short of the glory of God. Okay, then I want you to open Galatians 3 as well, saying the same thing. Galatians 3, Galatians 3 verse number... 21 says for all have sinned have come short of the glory of God uh -huh. verse 21 Galatians 3 no let's let's read 22 only yeah oh, 22 yeah Sorry. Galatians 3 verse 22 but the scripture hath concluded all under sin mm. that the promise of by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe he says even the scriptures have what? Concluded that everybody. What did I say? Everybody. 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 Whether you're born in a rich family, whether you're born in a poor family, the condition of sin is in your body. In fact, in Romans 7, I'm not going to read it now, but in Romans 7, uh, Paul make a, a, an argument and explain to, to the Jews to say, nothing good lives in my body. Nothing, absolutely nothing. All right? He says, in my physical body, nothing good lives. He says, when I want to do good, I cannot do it. Right? When I want to do this, I cannot do it because nothing good lives in what? In my body. That's why Jesus said, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood. When you say flesh, it means this body. Why are we getting new bodies? It's because our own body itself needs to be changed. Because the body itself, it's a body that we receive out of the birth of our fathers, right? Out of the birth of the, because sin is what? It's traveling. So when we talk about rapture, what are we talking about when we talk about rapture? We are talking about receiving the salvation of our bodies. The salvation of what? Our bodies. Yeah, we're receiving the salvation of our bodies. Because you, the difference between you and that person who is outside, right? Christ, is that you have Christ. You without Christ, you are much capable. Like you are capable of anything like that person. The only thing is that Christ is covering you. Christ is what? Covering. And the Holy Spirit is living in you, doing a work in the inside of you. So that's why Paul begins to say to people, do not boast. Right? Because Jesus Christ died for what? He died for you. Do not boast. Share the gospel with others. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's say for example... You are diagnosed with, with HIV, right? God forbid. So let's not use HIV. Okay. You are diagnosed with diabetes. Is somebody here what I'm saying right now? You are diagnosed with diabetes. God forbid as well. And then you find someone to cover it. A cure to cover it. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. And then you find somebody else just got diagnosed with the same disease. Won't you help them? I'm asking, won't you help them? You, you, you will tell them that, hey, I, I, want, I also had the same thing and this is what I did. I found what I did. I, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. Now, if you know that your state, it's not your state because you did something right. Right? Because the problem starts when people think it's because I'm doing the right thing. Right? That's why things are going well with me. But if you begin to understand it's what Jesus did for you, then you are able to share it. Because you know that you receive the what? A solution. It's somebody here what I'm saying right now. Once I know that I've received the solution, then I can share with the other person. Here is the solution. I got this solution. If you can take this or if you can change the way you eat and eat like this, then you will you, you find yourself that thing will go. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because the difference between myself and the person that is outside, it is because of my faith in Jesus Christ. 
is because of what? My faith in Jesus Christ. Say my faith in Jesus Christ. My faith in Jesus Christ. And my faith alone. And my faith alone. In Jesus. In Jesus. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So the sin is the beginning of the gospel. It's the what? The beginning of the gospel. The acknowledgement that we have all sinned. The acknowledgement that the human race have fallen is what brings you into total reliance and faith in Jesus Christ. Without it, without it, whether you are dancing in church, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Whether you are an usher in church, if you have not come into understanding of the teaching of sin according to the gospel, then you are not saved. I know some of you are shocked. Because why? Jesus died for the ungodly. If you thought you are in church because your parents, they are in church. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you're thinking that is to be saved, forget it. When rapture happens, you'll find yourself seated here. And you'll find someone who was a drunkard next door, who just gave his life to Jesus Christ, going to heaven. And you'll wonder what happened because me, I've been going to church. It's not that. It is you realizing. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. realizing your condition and looking to Jesus as your solution. Whether you are born by Christian family or not, are you hearing what I'm saying right now? That's not the condition of salvation. The condition of salvation is you knowing your condition and looking unto Jesus for a solution. I don't know if somebody's hear what I'm saying right now. Because most people got it wrong. They what? They got it wrong because, because they are told, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just make sure that you wear clothes that ends here. Make sure that you what? They are, told, they are told things that they need to make sure to do. But they are not told the reality. What did Jesus come to do? What is our condition? The condition of that pastor. The condition of that usher. The condition of that singer. The condition of your mother. The condition of that elder. The condition of that member. The condition of everyone is this. And we are all here because Jesus is our hope. Amen. He's our what? He's our, hope. He's our hope. Are you aware? Let me just shock you right now. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you aware that our salvation. Why is our salvation based on faith? Have you ever asked yourself, why should it be faith? It's because this body, we cannot do it with this body. We cannot what? This body cannot obey God. That's why we need a new body. This body cannot obey God. Have you ever wondered, you finish service now here, you feel so charged up, you reach home, all of a sudden you are cursing at someone. Not even cursing. Let's say you are angry at someone. Already your moods are changing. Already. Doesn't change. I was happy now. Yes, I was happy. But just two minutes, three minutes. Already. The condition of your body manifests. Hey. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. It's somebody hear what I'm saying. Without even wasting five seconds, five minutes or 30 minutes. Already your condition of your body manifests. Because this body. That's why when the Bible says walk in the spirit. What does it mean? It means living by faith. That means I'm having faith on what God says I am. Right? I'm having faith on who says I am. Because if I try to live by my body, I cannot fulfill. I cannot, I cannot, absolutely cannot. I can want to appear to people as a right person, but in secret, I cannot. Did somebody hear what I'm saying right now? Because that's what, that's what some, that's, that's how some, uh, believers view sin. I would rather appear to people as a good person, but I know inside I'm dying. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Yeah. That's not what the gospel teaches. The gospel, because God is the one that sees everything. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The yeah. gospel is you dependent, having faith, and dependent and hope on Jesus and Jesus alone. Because you, you know. Right? You have come to an understanding you are poor in spirit. Remember I taught you that teaching. You have come to an understanding that you are poor in spirit. Because why? It's not because you, it's not because you, um, let me not even say, it's because you're not because you're a bad person. You are a bad person. Obviously, you understand what I'm trying to say. It's not because you, you are more evil and others are more better. No, no, no. All of you are bad. Right? It is because this thing started with the first head of human race called men. There was a person called men. That's why we're all called men. 
because his name was man. That was Adam. Because he partook of the seed, the singular plural, the singular word called seed, then it was passed on. It was what? Passed on. Say it was passed on. It was passed on. Do you know the Bible says, let's open the scripture now because I want to talk about this. Say hallelujah. Romans 6. Listen to what Romans 6 says. Are we here? We are here. Are you here? We are here. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can read it for us, Elder. For the wages of sin is death. Mm Mm-hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, what, what did God say to Adam? He says, Adam, don't eat of that food. The day you eat of that food, you shall surely die. You shall what? Surely, surely die. die. You shall surely die. The day you eat of that food, you shall surely die. That is the wages. He says you'll die. And guess what? Adam ate of that fruit. He did not die the first time he ate of it. But years Later, he died because man was not supposed to die. And I know some people talk about spiritual death. There was no spiritual death here. This was physical death. That's why Jesus didn't die a spiritual death to save you. He died a spirit, a physical death. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. It was not a spiritual death. That's why animals never died a spiritual death to, to pay you for the sins at that time. Right? Temporarily, mm-hmm. but they died a physical death. So God was not talking about the spiritual death. He was talking about the physical death. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That is why even today, people still bury people. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. They don't understand why they have to bury people. I don't know why human beings, they, they, you know. It's as a result that is the wages of what? Of sin. Death in itself is the wages of sin. Men are not supposed to even die. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. I don't know if you're hearing what I'm saying. Yeah, they are right. not even supposed to die. No. That's why it says the wages of sin is what? Is death. Now, that's why this body of yours is not born again. I know some people don't understand that. It's not born again. I know there are people, I used to preach that, but it's not true. Your body is not born again. That's why you need a new body. You need a what? A new body, a new body that is created in God. A new house. A new tent. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Right now, the Holy Spirit is vitalizing our mortal body. That's what people mean when they say your body is born again. It's because the Holy Spirit is working to cause us to do the works of God. Say hallelujah. But the body itself is decaying. That's why Paul says, though our outward man, talking about the body, perish. Right? Because this body, there's nothing good. Right? But our inward man, that's the one we focus on by faith. You see now why faith is important? We are focusing on something that men don't see. Our inward man is renewed day by what? By day. Say hallelujah. Because the inward man is what is created. That's the one that is born again, is created by God. He's an inward man. But the outward man, mm -mm. say hallelujah. Say the outward man. Outward man. Mm -mm. Mm-mm. I say mm-mm. Mm-mm. because that is the man that you are born into this world with is the seed of your father say hallelujah mm-hmm. which is the seed of their fathers and their fathers have before you their fathers before you their fathers before you you know say hallelujah. hallelujah so do you realize what sin is sin is a corruption sin is a condition now when you realize how sin is revealed in the gospel you are able to tell people about the salvation. Then you realize what the gospel is. It's the saving power. It's the what? The saving power. Have you ever heard people saying, this is not in the gospel. This is not the gospel. Talking about the doings, right? The gospel, say hallelujah. Talking about the, the doings that you should do this, you should do this, you should do this. This is not the gospel. No, no, no. What is the gospel? Hey, I'm asking you, what is the gospel? Is the saving power of God. Amen. The gospel always is the saving power of who? Of God. God. Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. What you are presenting now is the law. It's not the, it's the, it's, it's the diagnosis. Is the what? It's the diagnosis that has revealed my condition. 
And it is revealed for everybody. Say it is revealed for everybody. It, is revealed. it did not just reveal for me. Even Jesus made it worse when he came. He says, I know you say that if someone uh, uh, sleep with somebody else in a particular way, uh, you know, and all that, that means they've committed this and this. But I say unto you, if you think of it, you have done it. Yo, so even thinking, say hallelujah. Even what? Thinking. Even thinking. Jesus said, even if you think of it, it's already done. Then what did you understand? Do you understand that sin has went even into the thoughts? Mm. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why we need who? Jesus Christ. That's why we need Jesus Christ. That's why the next topic when I talk about he was made sin on Wednesday. Why we need Jesus. You will begin to understand the two. Because the gospel begins in understanding sin. Sin is the condition. Is the basis of the gospel. If you fail to understand what sin is. Then you will fail to present the gospel. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because you might present the law. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Do you know that in the Old Testament. Are, are you here? Do you know that in the Old Testament, priests, you know, God told them they need to make sacrifices for their forgiveness of sins, right? Now, priests also, they will also make sacrifices for themselves first. Because even priests, they were counted as sins, even though they were in the presence of God. They will make offerings for themselves first. That's what God told them. Make offering for yourself first, then for the people. For yourself first. Why? Because it has been concluded that all have what? Sinned. Everybody. Let me open for you the last scripture. There was this. I think I will, I will, I'll end here because of time. We started a bit late today. Ha, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to open this. Where did I write it? Psalms 51. Psalms 51, right? Psalms 51 verse 5. 51 verse 5. This is David, right? Psalms 51 verse 5. If you have it, Elder, you can read for us. Psalms 51 verse 5. Uh-huh. Behold, I was sh shapen in iniquity, mm. and in sin did my mother conceive me. Did you see what he said? He says, I was sharpened in iniquity. This is David, the man after God's heart, the beloved of God, the one whose kingdom God established, right? Amen. That there is no end. The one who Jesus came from. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because he comes in the, in the lineage of David to become king. Mm -hmm. David says, I was sharpened in what? In iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Some people misinterpret this scripture. They think something which I'm not going to talk about. They, they, think, they think David was born out of, out of wedlock. Like he was like a child which was, was outside. Right? It's, are you hear what I'm saying right now? Mm -hmm. That's what they think it means. But that's not, whether it's a child outside or inside. What David is talking about there is that when I was born, I was born in what? In sin. And this is what God wanted me to tell you, which I told you last time. Is that sin makes it incapable for men to find God. So what? I know you don't understand what I'm saying. If you, if you are born again today, it's not because of your intelligence. I taught you this in, in predestination, right? It's because of the mercy of God. It's only the mercy of God that has caused you to see the light. If you are seeing your neighbor that is not seeing the light, it does not mean that your neighbor is a child of the devil and, and what, 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 and, and you, you are better. No, 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 no. It's because your neighbor has not found mercy. You must pray for mercy. Amen. You must pray for what? Mercy. It was mercy that caused me to be saved. I could have been capable of anything. You could, you are, you are much capable of anything. You see, once we understand that, say hallelujah. Once we understand that, we'll be merciful to people, right? We will share the message because we understand we are all men because of the sin, the seed of sin. 
all have fallen. You're not going to look at someone because you see a tattoo and you start discriminating them and speaking bad against them. Because you are seeing this and you speak bad against them. You, maybe you, you could have been the biggest witch ever if God did not show you mercy. I'm telling you. Maybe you, you could have been um, the, the, you know, believing in a tree if God did not show you mercy. Are you, because also worshipping of idolatry is the seed. is because of the symptoms of sin. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Maybe you, you could have been um, this and that if God did not show you mercy. So it's not because of you. It's not because you are so special. I was born in what, what? I'm so special. No. It's because of mercy. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why each and every child when he's born, I always told people, I said, pray for that child to see, to find mercy in God's eyes. Let them find mercy. Let them what? Find pray for the mercies of God to come on them because mercy open our eyes. Mercy is what opened my eyes. To believe. Say hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen uh, a pastor, but he gave birth to a child, but that child is living in a certain way? And people wonder, but your child is, is living in a certain way. What kind of a man of God are you? You, what kind of a Christian are you? Don't you don't you forget that all of us are born in sin? Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. All of us are born in sin. No one is exempt, no one is excuse. Everybody is born in sin. But, but what makes you saved is the message of God. Somebody prayed for you. That's what you don't know. Somebody prayed for you. Say hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody prayed for you. If, in fact, when Paul talks about it in the book of Romans, I'm not going to talk about it, but visit my teaching about predestination, right? Paul explained that why is it God, when, 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 when Jacob and, and Esau were in his mother's womb, God says, Jacob, I love, but Esau, I hate. Can you imagine? In the womb. Say hallelujah. Amen. Jacob, I what? I love, but Esau, I hate. Then Paul says, is there favoritism with God? He says, no, there's no favoritism. Is that God is the one? It's not so that, it's not that someone did something for them to be accepted by God, but it can be that God showed mercy. Mm -hmm. Because if God loved Jacob before Jacob was born, it was mercy. Mm -hmm. It's not because Jacob did something right but it was the mercy of god it was the what the mercy of god so you all of a sudden you love christ you love going to church do not think you are special from the person who's outside remember the condition is the same god has shown you mercy pray for them to also see the what to receive mercy and teach them the solution say hallelujah whether you teach them they seem to attack you know that they need the mercy of god they need the what? Say they need the mercy of God. If all believers we could have this understanding of sin and what sin, this understanding, I think we'll have a heart for people. We'll have a what? We'll want to see people safe. We will share the right gospel and we'll understand the gospel. Because the scriptures have concluded. What did the scripture conclude? All have sinned. And all means everybody. From the president up there to down there. Everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Amen. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. From the, uh, the greatest man of God up there to down there. When he says everybody, means what? Everybody. It is the message of God. The Bible says, let me teach you something that is so powerful as we are about to conclude. Write the word rakamim. A R A. C H Raka C H A Raka Mim M I M Raka Mim Write Raka Mim Say Hallelujah Oh you are still writing Say Hallelujah Hallelujah The word Raka Mim it's a Hebrew word for what in English you call mercy Right Say Hallelujah Is the English name is the Hebrew word for the name that is called what Mercy. But let me shock you. Since sin is singular, right? Rakamim is not actually mercy. It's supposed to be called mercies because it's a plural. It's somebody here what I'm saying. It's a what? In other words, if God's mercy is plural, that means if your sin is singular, that means your, the mercy of God is greater than your sin. 
is what? Greater it's greater than you sin. Because when, when you say, we're supposed to say, God show mercies. And why does it say mercies? Because it's great. When the Bible describes the mercies of God, it says it doesn't have an end. It's like an ocean. Have you, you are in Cape Town. You know the beach. If you can stand like this in the sea, can you see the end? No. That's how the mercies of God are. But sin is singular. It's what? Singular. That's why Paul says in the book of Romans, when sin abounds, he says much more. What is it? Much more. Grace abounds. Because the rakamim of God is plural. It's great. It's deep. It's abundant. That's why even when Israel, they could do what they do, but the mercies of God were always there. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 So you see, you cannot, you cannot be living in, in saying, oh, because other people peace sin in a certain way to chase you away from God. No, no. The mercies, the rakamim, the mercies of God are great. The mercies of God is not the mercies. The mercies of God, they surpass the havon, the, the iniquity. They surpass uh, the, the, the kata which is the sin, because all of those words are singular. But the messages of God are plural. They're infinite. They're what? Infinity. They're infinity. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. That means what God does for you is forever. Say it's forever. It's forever. Say it's forever. It's forever. Because he's the rakamim. Because Say God is the rakamim. God is rakamim. Say God is the rakamim. God is the rakamim. Do you see it? He wa- this word is in the Old Testament. It's in the scriptures. He says, for I am the Rakamim. I am full of grace. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. He is the Rakamim. And I want you to know, now that you understand the concept of sin, you understand the condition. And you understand why we also live by faith. Because we live by faith on what Jesus has done for us. And the working of the Holy Spirit in us produces produce the fruits produce the what not that we are too special like my neighbor no in fact if i stop prayer if i stop receiving from god the word of god i am exactly like that guy i'll start manifesting things like that guy are you hear what i'm saying right now are you hear what i'm saying because the body that you carry this body is decaying say hallelujah Say hallelujah. But my faith in Jesus, that's why Jesus is my hope. Stella never say Jesus is my hope. Jesus is my hope. Oh yes, he's my hope. Oh yes. I told you, you are not going to enter heaven because you, you, you did one, two, three for God. You did this and this for God. No matter how many great things I've done for God, my entering into heaven, it will be based on my hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the only one. He's the what? Only one. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for unveiling the concept of sin again to us so that we can be reminded, so that we can know the gospel, it is the saving power. And we are able to share this gospel and pray for the mercies of God, the rakamim of God, to come on each and every one, that they may see the light. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for revealing to us this again and again. So that, Lord, the love that we can have for the sinners may become great. Because all of us are under sin. In Jesus' name, we thank you that, God, we are freely justified by your grace because of your mercies. We give you praise and we give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. So, 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 this is the concept of sin. On Wednesday, uh, make sure that you connect on Wednesday at what time? Uh, I said what, 7, eh? 7 p.m. Make sure that you're connecting on Wednesday to watch. And I'm not going to play too many songs, so please be there on time. The moment is 7, the teaching will start. The teaching will what? The teaching will start. And I want to premiere it. Uh, I'm going to work on it myself, and I want to premiere it so that the teaching will start to make sure that you understand. Because now that we have dealt with understanding sin, now we need to understand that he he was made sin what does it mean that jesus was made sin that's the part that we're going to do with on wednesday and then on friday we're going to continue talking about other things which you're going to see and sunday as well we are still under passover and i want you to understand this series say hallelujah 
Once you understand the says you'll be a different Christian. You will know how to minister to everybody. You will know how to what? Minister. I'm telling you. When you look at everybody, you'll see the love of God that Jesus has for them. Because you understand something. Say hallelujah. You will not look with people with judgmental eyes. You will not look people with condemning eyes. Right? But you look them with the eyes that you want them to be saved as you were saved. Like someone who is healed from HIV or, or, or something and find a cure. He will want to help another one. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. But we have lost sight of that we were. Say hallelujah. We have lost sight of the condition. Now that's why we have a judgmental eye on other people. And that's not what God has called us to do. Because we have missed the basis of the gospel. Which is what? Which is sin. What is sin? Now that has been defined. Sin is the condition. And it began with Adam. And it is passed on. That's why we need to be born again. What does born again mean? It's because we need a new birth. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Yes, because of that. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching me. I'll see you again on, on Wednesday 6, uh, 7 p.m. Make sure that you connect. I love you so much and may God bless you and shalom. shalom. I decree and I declare over your life in this year, the year 5784, I declare you go over your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare stubborn doors that were closed to be open for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that you will possess the gates of your enemies. You will possess the gates that has your inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that in this coming year, floods, in this coming year, floods shall be poured out on you of blessings from above. Windows shall be open for you. For it is a season of open doors. It is a season of gates. It is a season of windows be open up unto you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare in your life, you shall have authority above every gate. You shall possess every gate. For heaven is open up for you. You are operating under the open heaven. It is your time, it is your moment. I decree and I declare in your life that your dryness is ended. Your stagnation is ended. Your setback is ended. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord said I should inform you that rivers of living water shall overflow from you. They shall overflow from you as you possess the gates. They shall overflow from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall possess the gates of your business. You shall possess the gates of your job. You shall possess the gates of your career. You shall possess the gates of the city. You shall possess the gates, the gates, the gates. You shall possess the gates. You shall be in charge. For no weapon from against you shall prosper. The Lord shall be mighty with you in this season to possess every gate where you were struggling before. This time you shall make it where it was tough before. This time you shall make it. Your capacity shall be increased in the name of Jesus. Say this to Zebubabel that it is not by mighty, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it shall be for you, but not by mighty, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. You shall possess the gates. You shall possess the gates. Open heaven is open for you. Doors are open up for you. Windows are open up for you. You will never fail. In the name of Jesus. It is your time. It is your moment. Receive these declarations. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are blessed. I decree and I declare over your life. In this year. The year 5784, I declare you door over your life. In the name of Jesus, I declare stubborn doors that were closed to be open for you. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that you will possess the gates of your enemies. You possess the gates that have your inheritance. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare that in this coming year, floods in this coming year, 
floods shall be poured out on you of blessings from above windows shall be opened for you for it is a season of open doors it is a season of gates it is a season of windows be opened up unto you in the name of jesus i decree and i declare in your life you shall have authority above every gate you shall possess every gate for heaven is open up for you you are operating under the open heaven it is your time it is your moment i decree and i declare in your life that your dryness has ended your stagnation has ended your setback has ended in the mighty name of jesus christ oh in the name of jesus christ of nazareth the lord said i should inform you that rivers of living water shall overflow from you they shall overflow from you as you possess the gates they shall overflow from you in the name of jesus christ you shall possess the gates of your business you shall possess the gates of your job you shall possess the gates of your career you shall possess the gates of the city you shall possess the gates the gates the gates you shall possess the gates you shall be in charge for no weapon form against you shall prosper the lord shall be mighty with you in this season to possess every gate where you were struggling before this time you shall make it where it was tough before this time you shall make it your capacity shall be increased in the name of jesus say this to zebubabel that it is not by mighty not by power but by my spirit saith the lord so it shall be for you but not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord, you shall possess the gates. You shall possess the gates. Open heaven is open for you. Doors are open up for you. Windows are open up for you. You will never fail. In the name of Jesus, carry them.